Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16 and on. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Yeah. <sighs> That's a good promise. Thank you, Lord. God, I just ask that you minister tonight in this place and online to whoever is watching, God. Father, your presence is welcome here. Holy Spirit is welcome here. We ask that you flow freely amongst all of us, that your will be done. Only your will be done tonight, Lord Jesus. We love you, and we want your will in our lives. God, let us open our ears, open our hearts, and just open like flowers before you and worship you, our heavenly King. We love and adore you always, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. We'd like to go around tonight and greet one another. We're together again. Baby 
pictures to the land And all who come before us And all who will be here Will sing the song of ages to the land Sing that verse again A thousand generations Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages to the land
machine I hold on through the pain What I lose means nothing Next to what I gain I tear down every idol So this heart won't stray
miss his plan. I don't want to miss his plan. I don't want to miss what he has for this church. And we are living in a season right now where in another country people are dying for what they believe. You see, in our country we haven't even touched it yet. We haven't had persecution. Working in other countries where pastors are watching their whole families killed in front of them because they will not forsake the Lord. They will not deny Him. We're seeing it all over the world, people being persecuted for their faith because they won't deny Him. They won't deny Him. And I believe tonight that He's going to remove some things, some things that have been holding you back, some things that have been weighing you down. If I could just get rid of this, I would serve you, Lord. Oh, prepare. 
got to pick up the pace. And you can only do that through the Holy Spirit working in you. Because of Him, there's nothing that you can't do. If you stop and listen. If you stop and would listen intently. It will save your life. It will prevent strife. It will set the captive free. But do you choose to be willing and obedient and be diligent in listening to me? This is not for the faint of heart. But in them who choose me, I will not depart. I will be with them completely to the end of their race. As long as you choose to embrace me. Embrace me no matter what. No matter what things are being hurled at you. There's nothing in this world that is worth what I can give you what I have freely given you. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. So it's up to you. What do you want to do? I would say choose wisely. Choose very wisely. You say, but I'm too old or I'm too young. That doesn't mean anything to me. I use the old, I use the young, I use the in-between. All you have to do is just listen to me. Listen to my small, still voice. Whether it's during the morning or the noonday or even as you sleep at night. Listen to me. Listen to me. The time is now. The time is now. This is the 11th hour. And midnight will be here soon. For some of you, it may be here sooner than what you think. So it's up to you to choose. Says the
times I say that to the Lord, Lord, you've been good to me. And he has. Yeah. Okay. He, he continues to be good. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. I'm so glad God's not angry with me. Sometimes people get angry with you, get upset with you. But God doesn't. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just magnify you tonight. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. And we praise your holy name tonight. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we were singing tonight, <clears throat> it's about laying things down, Lord. Lord, we just continue to lay our lives down. Yes, Lord. We lay our lives down, following you. <laughs> Peter said to Jesus, Lord, we have left all to follow thee. Lord, there's times that you ask that of people. Are you willing to lay everything down and follow me? I remember when I had to lay some things down and follow him and walk away from a lot of things. But I've never regretted it. Never regretted it. Because he has a path. He has a plan. You don't make mistakes, Lord. We do, but you don't. And we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. Well, let's just pray the Holy Ghost a little bit. Thank you, God. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we magnify you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Well, down in my spirit, I, I could hear these words. Are you willing to go? Saith the Lord. Are you willing to go and follow me? Are you willing to stay? Saith the Lord. And follow me. For there shall be some that I will say go. And they shall go. And there will be others that want to go. and But I'll say stay. And so you need to learn to know my voice. Know what I want you to do. Saith the Lord. For they will be those that will go. And they will obey me. There will be those that want to go. And I'll say, no, stay and declare what great things God has done to you and through you. And so, as you follow me, saith the Lord, I don't say it will be easy. There is a cost, there is a price to follow me. It may look like you'll lose everything in the natural, but you will gain everything in the spirit, saith the Lord. So learn to follow me. Learn not to follow the things of the world nor the, 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 the pleasures of the world. But put me first in everything that you do. And trust me. Trust me with all of your heart. For I will guide your steps. I'll open the doors that you need open, that I want open. And I will shut doors that need to be shut. You may want those doors open. But I know the end from the beginning. I know tomorrow what's there. And if I shut a door, it's for a purpose. It's because I love you and I want my best for you. If I open a door, it's the same thing. It's because I have my best for you. And you'll know it down in your spirit. You'll know in your heart. And I'll make a way for you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, the Lord is good. The Lord is good tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's pray a little bit more. Zita Raida Mushita Ramana Sakara Bantaka Zanda Rada Mushita Rabakara Rada Bantaka. Thank you. We magnify you, glorify you, Zita Bahroba Mushipon Gundana Mantara, Ebare de Midara Samanda Asakara Bahashka, Jatara Baba Bataka Sakamanda Rada. 
positive over our offering. Good confession tonight. Okay? I know you can do it. Is it on? Should be green. There we go. There you go. But I learned that your your tithes is your protection. That's biblical. And your offering, that's your blessings. That's where you get blessed. The tithes protects you. So your offering is your your blessings. Your blessings. So we pray right now, Father, even a hundred folds upon the blessings, Lord, and upon their hearts, Lord. Soften our hearts. Put in the ministries in these last days, Father, literally in these last days. Mm -hmm. So the ministry can go ahead yes. and do your perfect will. Yes. Lord, we want to do your will, not just do our will or yes, what Lord. we feel. Lord, yes. It's got nothing to do with feelings, Lord. So uh, touch our spirit, our hearts, Father, mm -hmm. to, to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Lord. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right.
really gaining a lot of popularity. But he also got a lot of criticism. And, and I sat under his feet for many, many years. And they would call him every, everything you could imagine. They called him all kinds of things. And I remember one time uh, the, the, some people that came to me and they said, you know, well, Brother Hagen, he, he's been accused of plagiarism. You know what plagiarism is? That means you, you, you write a book and you put somebody else's quotes in and you make it like it's yourself. Okay? And so uh, uh, they, they were asking about that, you know, you know, is it true? Well, you know, if you hear something, you got to go to the source. Mm. You got to ask them. Just don't take everybody's word for it. So I, I went to, brother. I couldn't get to Brother Hagen, but I got to his best friend, Doc Horton. I said, Doc, I said, you know, this is what people are saying. And they said, they're saying that he's, a, he's plagiarism and all these other things. And he said, look, he said, he's my friend. And I don't have to defend him. I don't have to say anything. And he didn't. Brother Hagen would say this, and I always remember. I still told Miss Kim this. I told Pastor Nelly this. I'll tell you tonight. Brother Hagen would say this about his critics. I have nothing to say to them. I have nothing to say about them. What wisdom. Yeah. What yes, sir. wisdom that man had. I have nothing to say to them. I have nothing to say about them. I remember years ago, many years ago, I was in my second church. And there was a gentleman, he had only been coming for a couple of weeks, or maybe a month or so, he seemed to be interested, liked the church and everything. And uh, one day he, he was out and about, and he, he, was, he got up and testified in church about this. And he said, I was someplace, and he said, I heard some people talking about Pastor Bightley. So he said, oh, that's interesting. So he went over and stood there and listened to him, and, and they were chewing me up one side and down the other and, and just kind of filleting you alive and everything else. And, and finally, he just interrupted. He said, uh, have you guys ever met Pastor Bightley? I said, no. Have you ever heard him speak? No. Have you ever been, in, been to his church? No. He said, why don't you shut up then? Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I put him on my board the next week. <laughs> I can't, you know, people are strange. Okay? Hallelujah. Well, you know, again, people are going to talk about you. There's just, you know, if they if they talk about if they talk about me, listen to me. They're going to talk about you. Okay? If people talk about you, it means they don't talk about anybody. Okay? Truth really doesn't matter. Doesn't always matter. You know, made up things sound a lot better. Okay? Hallelujah. Well, anyway, we want to get to, uh, uh, and it says, that, look at verse 54. And they were lying in wait for him, seeking to catch him something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Now, this is what Satan does. He tries to get people to say things, and then he'll use it against them. They, Jesus understood this. Has the devil ever tried to get, tick you off? Get you to say something? Yep. Say too much? Okay. Or say too little? Yep. And said they wanted to catch him in his words. Well, the devil, if they, if, if they can catch, it, catch you in your words, uh, then they, they've got an opportunity to, to mess with you even more. Mm -hmm. Now go with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. John 1, 12. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, and we're talking about receiving tonight, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so there's something about receiving. Okay? There's something about receiving that we, we maybe we've kind of missed a little bit. People of faith, uh, we, we, like, we like faith and everything, but you know there's some steps to some of these things. If, you're gonna, if you want God's best, you're going to have to learn how to receive, yeah. all right? And so, you know, I, I, you know, people give us compliments, give me compliments. Some of us, while they give me compliments, my wife gives me compliments all the time. She will say, "Gary, you're awesome. You're just, you're just awesome, awesome." Finally, I said, "Well, well, if you say so, uh, I, just, <laughs> I guess I am." <laughs> yeah, because I always say, "Well, no, you're more awesome. No, you're more awesome." You know? And so, well, finally, said, "Well." She says I'm awesome. I must be awesome. Okay. I take her word for it. I know she would like. 
but learning how to receive. Mm -hmm. Learning how to receive. We're, we're not really very good at receiving. Because we're always taught we have to we have to earn it. We gotta work for it. You know, it, it, people aren't, you know, you know, your employer, how many are employed? You got something, okay? Well, they, they're just not gonna give you something for you have to work for it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> ours you have to work, right? Yes, I okay, you have to work and then you receive a paycheck. Okay? Because you did something. The kingdom of God is just the opposite. Okay? God's got things that you didn't work for that you can receive. Okay? And here's one of them, is that uh, uh, for as many as received him, to them gave he power. Okay? So power, when you begin to receive what God freely gives, and you can receive it, some power is available to you. Okay? So it's in the receiving part. For as many, you know, not everybody received him. Some of them, as the Bible says over in the Gospel of John, I think they're on chapter 7 or chapter 8, it said there were many that believed on him, but for fear of the Jews, they wouldn't confess him. Mm. Well, you know, well, yeah, he, yeah. But they, it says they, they, loved, they loved their position. Okay. They, 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 they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. And so there is a, a, a place that we receive in the Gospel of Mark, go over there, in chapter 4. It talks about the seed you're all very familiar with, the seed that falls on good ground and, and uh, uh, the stony ground, the thorny ground, and, and the rocky ground and everything. And verse uh, 20 is where we want to go down to. <clears throat> and these are they which are sown on good ground. Everybody say good ground. Good, good ground. ground. Okay. Such as hear the word, okay, and receive it. Now, if you can hear it but not receive it, you have to understand that. Well, I, I, I've heard that. Okay? Faith does not come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. Okay? You say, well, you know, well I, I've heard that before. I, I've, I've people say that, and I'm probably guilty of it too. Well, I've heard that before. Well, immediately, you shut down. You shut off the part to receive. Well, I've heard that before. Well, did you receive well, that, the, the revelation that's there? Did you really hear it? You, you have to hear it. And you know what? You might ha you might hear something. I, I have a, a a gentleman that I know, uh, Doug Jones, and I've heard this story before. And uh, he worked for Kenneth E. Hagan, worked in his ministry. And uh, Kenneth Hagan had a traveling ministry besides the Bible school. And so Doug Jones traveled with Brother Hagan. It was his responsibility to take the book table and to keep the books and sell the books and the tapes and the cassettes and everything that they had. And so, but also, his, his responsibility, once the service started, he would cover up the things and go set in the service. And he would listen to Brother Hagin. Well, Brother Hagin, when he's preaching in different places, he would preach the same message, four or five, six messages all over and over again. And so, Doug Jones had heard that, you know, multitudes of times, multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes of times, these five or six teachings, because not everybody understands faith. And so, when you go to a new place, you have to start all over again. And so he said, I got to where I knew his sermons down word for word. He says, Brother Hagin's up there preaching, and I'm preaching right along with him, you know. Oh. He <laughs> says, and now it's time to laugh, because he's going to tell a joke. He, goes, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he said, one day I'm sitting there, and he says, all of a sudden I heard it. All of a sudden he said, I heard it. He says, when I heard it, it changed my life. I got the revelation of faith. See, I had heard it, heard it, heard it, but one day, it finally, it, you know, it, it, there's a drop of about 18 inches, okay? So the camp may be about 16 inches, okay? <laughs> <laughs> <Or less. laughs> He's there, <neck>, don't worry. <laughs> but it's got, it has to drop. See, how do I know if I have head faith or heart faith? Because if, if you have head faith and something goes wrong, you could believe it. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. it was only in your head. Right. Heart faith, even though the doors are shut, it doesn't look like it's working, it's still available. Mm How -hmm. you got time for a story? Yes. Yes. Always. Always. All right. Uh, a number of years ago, I had read the Bible. I, I loved hunting and fishing. I lived at a hunting and fishing resort. You should like hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. And so I got born again and, and got a hold of some of Brother Hagin's tapes on faith. And so uh, it was always really important for us to uh, be able to get a deer for deer season. 
And so uh, in Michigan, we, we had a, a deer season which uh, started no November 15th. That was one of my high holy days, okay? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I couldn't even sleep on the night before. I mean, I just, <laughs> bucks, big bucks are just passing through my dreams. Oh, it's hard to sleep. <laughs> and so, but anyway. I found, I found some verses in the Bible about believing God. It says that it says that in the book of Psalms, he says that all the beasts of the fields are mine. Okay. Well, I said, well, Lord, I'm an heir of God, right there of Jesus. Well, if they're yours, they're mine too. And so I claimed a deer. I cla I, I claimed a, 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 a venison, you know, for our, my, our freezer, so we'd have something, some meat for the winter. And so uh, we have 15 days of deer season, November 15th through the 30th. And so I'm, I'm confessing, I'm believing, I'm, I'm getting my deer. I'm getting my deer. Rather well, 15 days come and go, and I didn't get my deer. I said, well, okay, okay. But praise the Lord, uh, we have bow season coming up. So uh, I hunted through the bow season. Didn't get a thing. But that's okay. Now it's black powder season, musket. I borrowed my brother's musket. And I hunted all that. Like, and so I've gone from November 15th up to January the 1st, and everything's over now. Yeah. Everything's over. I didn't get my deer. I didn't get a deer. Okay? But I still kept the, 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 the switch of faith turned out. Well, I had claimed it. I received it. I said, man, that's mine. I'm on my, I'm on my way to church. I have to drive about 100 miles. And so we had to leave very early in the morning. It was still dark. I got about a mile down the road, and here's this big doe laying right in the road. <laughs> big, huge thing. So I get into town. We didn't have cell phones. I called, I found the payphone, called my brother. I said, get down there. Uh, there. It's early in the morning. There's no traffic. I said, get down there. There's a big, big deer laying in the road. Just get a hold of it, put it in the truck, and drag it back. So he did. He dragged that thing back there. And, and then he, he hung it up in the garage, but he didn't gut it or anything. He just said, well, by the time I got home, it was late night, that night, so I ended up having to gut that. But you know what? I, I, I still got my deer. Okay? I still got it. Because I found the Word of God, and, and I believed God for it. Okay? I would go fishing with Albert Hood. Okay? And, and I, I love Albert. He's not as good a fisherman as I am, apparently. So. <laughs> there you go. Can we get in the boat? I don't know, has anybody ever been a fisherman here? Yeah. Fishy, fishy, in the brook, fishy, fishy, by my hook. Fishy, fishy, in the lake, fishy, fishy, take my bait. <laughs> I used to do that. <laughs> then I found faith. I found faith. I found in Genesis chapter 1 that God gave us dominion over everything that creeps and swims. And so I exercise dominion. I get in the boat with Albert. Or we're going to float down the Macadamia River. And I said, I take dominion over the fish. And I, and I take dominion over that. Well, I went for Albert to take dominion. He didn't. He just lets me do it. Well, I end up, I got my living and helped him get his. <laughs> so then we go out fishing in Macadamia Lake a, a, another year or two. And he's got Brent Bishop with us. And we're going to go out and go trolling or something. And uh, so I said, I take dominion over the fish. I take dominion, you know, over, over the fish, and I, I called them in. And, you know, I think I was the only one that caught any fish that day, too. Well, again, the Word of God is true. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why are you saying all this? I don't know. Just going to let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, you don't go hunting and fishing anymore. No, but I, I pray in venison and moose. Yeah. I, I prayed it. You said, well, you can't do that. It's too late now. I've <laughs> 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 already done it. Okay. If they hear the word and receive it, you have to receive it. See, sometimes we think, well, I took notes. That's, that's great. I'm glad you take notes. But if you don't receive what you're writing down, it's not going to work. It's going to sound good going to look good, and you can say, man, I, you know, give, give me a few days from now, I might give this a whirl. Well, I'll, I'll try it. Well, it doesn't work by trying it. <coughs> the Word of God does not work by trying it. The Word of God works by believing it. Okay? It. And doing it. But you have to receive it. You can't leave that step out. For it says, 
the good ground says he hears the word and receives it and brings forth fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60, and some 100 fold. Now, I, the Lord said this to me because I've preached this many times. And, and he said to me one day, kind of just up, upended my theology a little bit, when he said to me, I do not have any 30-fold seed. I do not have any 60-fold seed. All I have is a 100-fold seed. All my seed is a 100-fold. What determines what you're going to get is the soil in you. You're the soil. You're the soil. Now, you know, what, 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 you know, maybe the soil isn't that great. Maybe you only get 10. Well, 10 is better than zero. You know, and, but like Brother Hagin said, some people believe for nothing and get it. You know, <laughs> you know it's like shooting at zero and getting it. Some people can get 20. Okay? But that's still, that's still, it's okay. Okay? But you can get to the place. You can do something with the soil in your life. You can enrich the soil. How do I enrich the soil? By the, the more word of God you can put on the inside of you and start believing it. Okay? And when you be, get to the place that, that you believe it, you can receive it. And when you receive it, everything can change. Yep. Hallelujah. Yes. You've heard, you heard about having faith as a child. You know, childlike faith. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a lady that... Uh, I had to drive over to... Uh, Halifax to pick her up. Uh, George Moss was uh, with us and his wife was with us and we were in the church on Regent Street. And so this lady was, I believe she was a singer that she would sing, but she had to stay behind and do a ladies meeting and uh, George Moss had flown over here and so I had to go pick her up. And uh, while she was over there, uh, she had a, her husband was back in Chicago and she has a little daughter that was maybe six, seven years old and and uh, her daughter had been wanting her to sing, you know, Mommy, I, I want a Barbie doll set, okay? I want the Barbie doll set. Now, she didn't want just a Barbie doll. She wanted the whole, whole kit and caboodle, which is several thousands of dollars. There's a Barbie house, there's a Barbie car, there's a Barbie this, there's a Barbie that, there's a Ken this, there's a Ken that. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, and, and that stuff was expensive, even back then. And she wanted, she just would call her mom and say, you know, uh, Mom, I, I'd really like to have this. And so she had shared, you know, while well, she was preaching there, that was something that her daughter wanted. Well, on the way back, we were driving back, and her daughter calls, little girl, and she was saying, Mom, Mommy. I want, I really, mommy, I really want that, you know, it just, I just so want that Barbie doll set. And she was saying, you know, well, honey, you know, you know it, it's, it, I don't have the money for that. And, uh, and so, and, and so finally she said, well, we'll see, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Thank you, mommy, thank you, thank you, mommy, thank you. She turns to her daddy on the phone. Mommy's getting me this uh, Barbie doll thing. Mommy's getting me this doll. Oh, thank you, mommy, thank you, mommy. And mommy said, well, I just, I just, I, she's already received it. Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> this little girl has received it. Because yes. mommy said she would try. Yeah. That was all she needed. So we're here in McAllister, or Fredericton. And uh, uh, she's, she's ministering here for us at Unbreathed Street. And she gets a phone call from a lady in Halifax that had been in the church. And she said, well, you know what? I, I remember you talking about that. She said, my daughter grew up and had all the Barbie stuff. And now she's, she's moved out. She's going to the university. She said, I'll just give you everything. She said, well, I don't have that kind of money to pay for it. She said, no, I, I'm going to give you everything. So she just boxed it all up and sent it off to Chicago. That, that little girl knew how to receive. Mm -hmm. See, she, this childlike faith. Mm -hmm. You just believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. But see, we've got, you know, we, we've got these 12 steps to answer prayer. You know, the 16 steps to receiving your miracle. You just receive. Amen. Okay? Receive. You know, it's not rocket science. But we make it rocket science. Yes. 26 steps to how to receive from God. Well, this little girl, she forgot to read the book. 
She just, Amen. she just believed. It's just so simple. She just, she just believed. She just believed. She received. Thank you, Lord. See, receiving, you receive, go to Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, verse 24. The secret to receiving is in the believing and the receiving. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. So you believe you receive something before you have something. Do you understand that? Yes. And so this is the, this is what faith is. Faith believes it has something before it has something. It is is considered done. It's a done deal. All right. It's a done deal. All right. Hallelujah. When I asked Noami to marry me. She received that, and it was a done deal. Okay, How, even though we had to wait to wait some time to, to get married, as far as she's concerned, it's done. Okay, it's done. I asked her to marry me, and she said, uh, "Well, no." Oh, I knew she liked me. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> and I, I said, "Really?" She said, "I didn't see any ring." <laughs> well, I said, I'm not going to go buy a ring if I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> so one day she called me, and she says, where are you? I said, I'm down at the mall. Oh, she said, you're looking for a ring. And I smartened up real quick. <laughs> I thought, I, I better get down there. <laughs> she had no trouble receiving that. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just, you know, some people can't even receive compliments. They, they can't receive them. You know? Well, you did such a good job today. Well, no, no, I didn't. I, was just, I thought I was terrible. You know? I just thought it was just, just wasn't very good at all. No, you know, just learn to, You look so nice today. No, I don't, feel, I don't feel like I look nice at all. Well, you know. You can receive a compliment. Okay? You know? Just just learn how to receive compliments. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it says, For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Okay? Mm. And so there's there's power that we receive. When you begin to receive things, you receive what God has. Yes. All right? Hallelujah. Now I can tell you, you know, I, I could tell uh, Ireland. Let's just talk about Ireland for a little bit. He's, he's always... <laughs> That's such an agreeable person. Uh, I could say, Arliss, uh, uh, at the end of the service, I'm going to give you $10. I receive it. You receive that, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Who else said they received that? <laughs> Someone else. <laughs> you got my last $10. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you believe I'll do that? Yes. See, you, you have to learn to be a person of your word. Yes. Okay? If, you're, if your word is no good, you're, you're, you're really no good either. Yeah. It's yeah. the same with God. If, God, if, God, if God's word is no good, then God wouldn't be any good. But you can depend on his word. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So, okay, yeah. in my wallet there, would you get out? I think there's $10 there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go, would you go give that to Arliss? Yes, okay. Now he received it, <laughs> but he, he had to believe I had it, I that I'd be a person of my word. I do. Yeah. I do, Pastor. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, now Julie, she's more than a conqueror. <laughs> so she tells Arliss, you put that in my purse now. <laughs> Arliss received it. <laughs> But she's more than the conqueror. <laughs> How do we get into these things? <laughs> you, 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 you hear the word of God. Not everybody can hear the word of God. Okay? Some, some people, they, 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 just, they want to fight.
fight you. Okay? They want to fight you over faith. They want to fight you over this. They want to fight you over that. Uh, when I first started pastoring in, in, in McAllister, my first church, at the end of the service, uh, this one guy would come up with his Bible, and I mean, I just just taught a lesson, and he would say, now, now you show me in the Bible where this is. Well, we just got done doing chapter and verse. We just got done doing chapter and verse. And he said, well, you show me. And so we would go through the scriptures again and show him in the Bible where it was written. He had his own Bible. But see, he couldn't receive that from me. You, you, you have, you know, there's some people they can't receive from you, even when you tell them the truth. There's an old saying, I have to look it up, it goes something like this. When you, you don't have to defend yourself in front of your friends and, and, and your enemies will never believe you anyway. Yeah. So you don't, you, don't, you don't have to defend yourself. But he would come and he would say, well, where is it? And I'm sure, and he'd say, well, okay, you wait until next Sunday. Okay? He'd wait until next Sunday. Then he'd be right back there as soon as the service was over. Well, he proved to me. Well, he, he had trouble receiving the word of God. Okay? Now, the Bible does say to rightly divide the word. And we, we want to do that, I'm sure that we rightly divide it. We're not there to twist it. The Bible says uh, that they would twist Paul's words, and he said they would do that to their own destruction. So we have to handle the Word of God very carefully. Yes. All right? Now, I, I will freely admit, I don't know everything. I don't. And so, you know, what, what do you do then? Well, if you don't know what to do, you ask Arliss. He, he knows everything. <laughs> oh, I knew it was coming. Oh, yeah. Everybody say, ask Arliss. Ask Arliss. <laughs> We, we, we need to get no, no, no. <laughs> We need to we need to get a <laughs> we need to yeah, we need to get a little something that says Ask Arliss <laughs> Ask Arliss <laughs> You don't know what to do Ask Arliss T shirt Now we have a T shirt Thank you Lord Thank you Lord and so, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to salvation, it says, for as many as received him, John 1, 12, for as many as received him to them, gave me power to become some kind. Well, we had a lady in our church, her name was Clara Haynes, and when I first got here, uh, she was very instrumental in, in getting, getting me here, and so I, I moved here in 1998, October, uh, no, I, I moved here in September, but I had preached in August of 1998, we started the church. And uh, she was a part of the church for a number of years. And then she tells me this story about uh, uh, how she got saved. She said, I, I realized that I needed a savior. Mm -hmm. And so I went to, she went, said, I went to church after church after church trying to get saved. But I couldn't get saved. Mm -hmm. And say, I went to this church. They said, well, you, you know, if, if you come to church here and become a member, you're saved. And she said, well, that just didn't set right with me. And she went to some other place and said, well, you have to be water baptized in a particular formula. And, and she said, well, that didn't really quite set with me. And, and she went, she said, I went to church, to church, to church, to church. And, and I'm trying, I'm desperately trying to get saved. I want to give my heart to God. And finally, somebody showed her about how to receive. Mm -hmm. See, she was trying to, to do something instead of receive something. You see, we, we are born and bred, and we are brainwashed, and we've got to do something. And God's grace is just so good. For by grace are you saved. <coughs> by faith. Not of works. We did nothing. Okay? He freely, he freely gives that to us. So freely. Just freely give. And so eventually she finally she finally could receive. The, without having to try to do something. To earn it. See. We're people, we want to earn it, earn things. But this is how the world is. It, you know, Jenny works there in, a, in a shoe store, and, and you know, the more shoes you sell, you, know, you, you, you get bigger commissions. Okay? In some places, they've got contests. If you sell enough stuff, you, you win something you know, as, a, as a top salesperson. Okay? What do you win if you're the top salesperson, Jenny? A few pair of nylons or something, or what? Shoes. <laughs> yeah, but they do have things to, to encourage you. Okay? Well, that's because she works hard. Okay. Now, if you all want 50% off shoes, you go down there and see. <laughs> 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 I'm always high about that. Just teasing. Just teasing. 
But see, we're all trying to, we want to all do something. And he says, receive. Receive. Mark 11, 24 said, whatsoever you say, when, when you pray, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. Believe first that you receive it. Mm -hmm. And so then, then you will have it. And so the believing and the receiving comes long before sometimes having it. And once you understand that, I'm in the believing and receiving stage, I receive it. When you say, how do I know when I've received it? When you can say, thank God it's mine. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank God it's mine. Now we've been believing for $5.7 million. And so, you know, we've been standing and believing and standing and believing. And so one day I just said, Lord, I, I just received that. I just received it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to, I'm not fighting it. I just, Lord, I just received that. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I remember Brother Higgins telling this story. You do have time for a story. Oh, absolutely. Always do. This yep. lady, she came and and uh, he'd been praying for people. And once the, the anointing lifted on him for praying for people, he, he wouldn't pray for anybody else. And she got up there and she's still laughing and he, the anointing lifts and, and, uh, he says, I'm, I'm sorry. She said, he said, I, I, I don't have that anointing to, to pray for you. And she started to cry while well, it kind of touched his heart. And he said, well, sit down here. And so she sat down and she has all these terrible, terrible diseases. And he took her over to 1 Peter 2.24. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you can read, right? She, he, she said, yes, of course I can read. She said, well, let's read what it says. 1 Peter uh, 2.24. Who in his own self bear our sins in his own body, talking about Jesus, on the tree, that we being dead unto sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. He, she said, well, what does were healed? She said, well, I mean, it, it's, it was, and it's, it, it's happened. Exactly. And he, he said, that's correct. She said that he said not not just thank him, that he's not. She lifted her hands and she's thinking, Thank you, Lord. She said, Thank oh Lord, thank you. It feels so good to be healed. It feels so good to be well. It feels so good to get up and walk. It feels so good not to be in pain. And he said, Sister, rise and walk. And she goes up out of that thing. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So he didn't God. have any anointing Praise. to pray for her. But when she believed the word and received it, she, she didn't, she, he got her to, before she could think her way out of this, he got her to start lifting her hands. Now go over with me to Luke, Luke 11. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 11. Jesus said this. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. Now we're talking about receiving. Everyone that asked, receives. Say that with me. Everyone, everyone that asks, asks receives. receives. Now, is that possible that that's true? Is this too good to be true news? Well, I, I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Is that right? Jesus said this. Everyone, for everyone that asks, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, which is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father uh, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? He said, everyone that asks, receives. I had a lady... We were here in this church. We've, we've been in here since 2000 and 2003. We did the expansion in 2004. And sometime after that, she was coming for a while, and, uh, and, and we would give the invitation to be filled with the Spirit. And she never did come. But we said to her, if you'll ask, we read these scriptures that everyone that asked receives, and, and uh, so on and so forth. And she said to me one day, she said, Pastor Bailey, it's, it's not true what you preach. It's not just not true. 
I said, well, what's not true? She said, what you teach isn't true. I said, well, what am I teaching that's not true? You said that if, if you would ask it for the Holy Spirit, he would give it to you. And I said, and he, she said, that's not true. And I said, well, okay, tell me about it. She said, and I said, well, come back to my office. So we went back to my office and sat there. I said, well, what happened? She said, well, you said if you would ask for the Holy Spirit, he would give it to you. And I went at home and I asked him for the Holy Spirit and he did not do it. Therefore, you didn't tell the truth. I oh, okay. I said, I, I know what we're going to do right now. Let's do this. I want you to take your finger, point it up to heaven, and say, Jesus, you are a liar. Ooh. You are a liar. I said, would you do that with me? Jesus, point your finger and say, you are a liar. She says, I can't do that. I said, why not? She said, well, I just... I just can't do it. I said, but Jesus said that, that if you ask it, that, that you would receive. Well, she said, well, I'm not going to do that. I said, well, why don't we do this then? Why don't we just thank him right now? Just thank you and I in the office. We're just going to thank him that his word's true. She said, okay. So I said, I'm going to lift my hands, and I'm going to thank him that his word's true. Why don't you lift your hands and thank him that his word's true? She said, well, she could do that. So I lift my hands, up, and I'm thanking Lord, I thank you. Lord, your word is true. Thank you so much. Lord, your word is true. She said, Lord, thank you. Lord, your word is true. Thank you. Lord, your word is true. I said, I'm going to eat the Brahma, Rushi, Banga, Dara, Rushi, Dara, Nana, Mama. And next thing I know, she's just out there like a bat out of Bermuda. I mean, she is going in tongues. She is just rattling it off. And finally, I get her calm down. I get her to slow down. And, and I looked at her, and she said, oh, my. <laughs> oh See, my listen, God. she had, she didn't, Jesus did it. She just didn't, she didn't know it. And she said, I said, what made you think you didn't receive? She said, I didn't feel anything. Oh, yeah, there you go. So sometimes we're waiting for a feeling to come and to help us to feel like we've received something. But he's already done it. Amen. Faith has Hallelujah. nothing to do with feelings. We love feelings. We love them. We love the emotion. Yes. Okay? But when it comes down to faith and receiving, it is just it is done by faith. I receive by faith. Feelings are no feelings. Well, you know, when she received it and she finally spoke in tongues, but once she got going, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't hardly sh shut her up. <laughs> she's, she's like a chainsaw on high, you know. <laughs> well, but she already had. You see, if you if, if you're believing God for something and you've received it by faith, you've got it. Amen. Why don't you just thank Him for it? Hallelujah. Well. Hallelujah. You know, you can thank God for things before you have them. Amen. You know, you, if you know what God wants you to have, okay, you can believe God. You can thank God. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we've been meddling a little bit here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good stuff. Thank you, Lord. Go with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. I told my wife I'd get her up here tonight for a little bit. And we'll have her come up. And I don't know what she's going to do. We just we are going we're going to trust God. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, Acts chapter eight, verse five. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them, and that many taken were palsies, and that were lame were healed. So it's interesting to note that in Philip's ministry, his anointing only lied in a particular area. Okay? He was an evangelist, and it says that those that were taken with palsy, those that were lame, and those that were crippled. That was his ministry. Where he prayed for those kind of people. Maybe if you had a you know if you had a head cold it might not work. His his anointing was in different areas, all right. And so anyway, and there was great joy in the city. But there was a, a certain man by the name of Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. 
to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because of the long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, they, when they get water baptized, they, they are believing that Jesus is the Messiah. Aren't they? Yes, they are. Okay. And it says, uh, uh, but when, when they believed Philip's preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, wondering and beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they said unto them, Peter and John. Now notice they have heard, they've received the word. Who's the word? Jesus. Who's the word? Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. All right? And that they have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. All right? It says, verse 50, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So if you're going to get something from God, you're going to have to receive it. Yes. You're going to have to receive your salvation. Okay? You're going to have to, when you get filled with the Spirit, you're going to have to receive that. Okay? Virtually everything you're going to get from God, you're going to have to receive it. Okay? By faith. And so he said when they came down, he, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You know, that's the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Okay? And so that's still a great way to pray. When we give an invitation at church, anybody who would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we can pray. Lord, uh, we pray that people will receive the Holy Spirit. You have you have a, a, a family, you know, uh, and help them to get get born again. Help, we pray for them to receive the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. Okay, pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Pray for them to receive the Word. All these things help us tremendously, and so we we need to really begin to get good at receiving. All right. And so God, everything that, that you have uh, is going to come. Uh, it's going to come to us, uh, and you're going to have to receive it. Yes. You have to be good at receiving it. And so you can't just shut the door and say, "Well, I don't know if that's for me or not." Well, if it's in the Word, it, God. You know, I, I've heard people say, "Well, it's this guy was on." Uh, uh, I, I, I probably should have mentioned his name, but he's his uh, name is John Maxwell, so I won't mention his name. <laughs> and, uh, and he was on these show these little clips of things and he was talking about those people who they claim are led by the spirit you know so that's, you can't be led by the spirit that's impossible okay? Nobody, how do you know you're being led by the spirit prove it well, you see he'll, he'll never be able to receive you see you know, he don't speak in tongues either why because he didn't receive it he didn't receive it John Osteen not Joel but his father John uh, he used to preach. He, he was a Baptist preacher in Houston, Texas. And he, he being a good Baptist, they, they thought tongues was of the devil. Okay? And so he said, he says, and the gifts of the Spirit. He said one day, he said, I'm preaching from my Baptist point of view. He said that the, the gift of tongues is, is people that go to the university and they, they get these linguistic abilities and they can, they can easily and quickly learn uh, five or six uh, you know, different languages and they can learn how to translate. And, and, they can, and, and the gift of prophecy is just preaching. Gifts of healings. He said, I got over into gifts of healings and, and the gifts of healing are our doctors today, you know, with their medicine and their vast knowledge. And someone said, yeah, but aren't there some atheists? Doctors out there making people well? He said, oh, I kind of rocked his theology a little bit. <laughs> and, and the more he talked about the gifts and then he said, but he said to the people, he said, he said, people, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Forget it. I'm going to quit right now. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So he, he, he would meet this other Pentecostal pastor and they would go have lunch after, after Sunday morning service. He said, this, this Pentecostal preacher, drive me crazy. Just absolutely, just, you know, being Baptist, just drive me crazy. He said, he'd see him, he'd say, glory, glory to God. He said, just, just drive me bananas. He said, glory, glory. And, uh, he said, they're having dinner. And he said, he said, well, how was your service to John? John said, oh, it's okay, you know. And she said, well, how was your service, just to be polite? He said, oh, man, he said, it was amazing. 
we had this missionary, and he was over from some country way off in the dark corners of the, of the earth. And a little girl got up and spoke in tongues. And John said, yeah, she's probably in a mental institute right now. So he said, so in, his, in, his, in his mind, he said, yeah, she's probably in a mental institution right now. And, uh, and he said, uh, she got up and she spoke in tongues. And our guest, inter our guest missionary got up and said, ladies and gentlemen, she is speaking a dialect that is so remote that only a handful of people have ever heard this and ever understood it. And he says, I'm one of them. They give the interpretation. Yeah. He said, when he wow. said that to John Osteen, something exploded on the inside of him. Something just exploded. Because for the first time, he was able to receive. Okay? Now go with me to, to, I think it's Matthew chapter 1. I'll show you a little something. We've shared it before, but there's, there's people here that, that may not have seen this and heard this. Mm. Now we're talking about receiving. Um, chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1. Um, Verse 18, let's start there. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away properly. Now he, she, he could have had her stoned and killed for an adulteress or a fornication. Now they are... You have to understand things in th that day were a little bit different than they are in our day. They were betrothed. They were betrothed. Mm. They were traveling together. And they were staying in motels together. If they were to get, uh, if they were to, to separate, they, he would have to, Joseph would have to get a bill of divorcement. That's how, that, you know, we have to talk about people that are engaged. Okay? Well, there, there's a higher level in the Jewish culture and that is betrothed. Okay? Now they weren't fooling around, but the, they, they were on their way to get married. Okay. Now notice this part. We're just, we just threw that in for free. Then, her, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man not willing to make a public example, was minded to put, put her away privately. Notice that that part, minded. Everybody say minded. Minded. Okay. He was minded to put her away privately. He had what? What, what did he do? He had made up his mind. This is what I'm going to do. Okay? The mind can be a dangerous thing okay? when it comes to the things of God. You can, you can just be so rigid. And guess Let's go to the next verse. Okay? But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, Thank saying, God. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary <coughs> thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. We can go one more verse. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Notice the only way that God could get through to him was in a dream. Why? Because he had shut God off in what God wanted to do. He was not open. He could not receive. Jesus said this to his disciples. I have many things to say to you, but you can't receive them yet. It's the same truth today. There are things that, that God wants to give us, and we're not, you know, sometimes our minds just shut off to it. Oh, forget that. I'm not going to listen to this stuff. I have a heresy, you know. Well, God might have to visit you in a dream. Might have to visit you in a dream. Well, again, Brother Hagin tells the story. He said we were, we had, uh, we were renting this house from a family, and and he said that it was probably one of the nicest houses we had ever rented. And uh, uh, we decided that we would offer the, the family that, that owned the house that uh, uh, we would, we would want to buy it from them. Because they had mentioned something about maybe wanting to sell at some point. And so they went to them and said, we would like to buy the house. And they said, no, we're not interested in selling the house. And so, you know, that's just kind of put the kibosh on it. So they went home and they said, no, you know, I got it without my spirit. We're, we're supposed to have that house. So they went back and said, no, we, we really believe we're supposed to have that house. He said, well, I told you, we're not interested in selling the house. So they go back home and he says to his wife, well, you know, the word of God says that been two of us agree upon anything that, that the Lord would do that, Matthew 18, 19. And so she, he said to her, unless you and I agree that God gives him a dream and his wife, 
that they're to sell us the house. <laughs> so they agreed in prayer, in prayer, that God would give them a dream. Are you listening to me? Yeah. That God would give them a dream. So they prayed the prayer of agreement. Lo and behold, that night, that couple has a dream. And in the dream, it was so real that they were to sell the house to Kenneth E. Hagen and his wife, Aretha. A couple of days go by, and there comes a knock. Didn't have doorbells in those days. They knocked on the door. Okay. Here's this couple, and they said, well, we've, we've changed our mind. They said, yeah, we already know. <laughs> we already know. There you go. See, the things that God, there can be so many things that God wants to give you, but if you can't receive it, you can't have it. Well, sometimes God wants to bless your socks off and you don't want socks. Okay? Oh, I don't want this. You know? Somebody, John Osteen one time, he was, he, he was kind of broke. And he said, Lord, uh, I need X amount of dollars. And so it wasn't very long. And somebody came up and said, the Lord told me to give you this. Tried to hand him some money. He said, no, 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 I'm not going to take that. He said, forget it. No, I don't, I don't take money from people. He said, I've been praying for God to do something. Yes. Somebody else comes up and offers him some money. So he said, uh, no, no, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. And finally, he was complaining to the Lord. He said, Lord, I've been trusting you. I've been, I've been trusting you to, 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 to uh, make, meet this need. And the Lord said to him, I've been trying to, but you wouldn't receive it. He said, well, I wanted you to do it. He said, but I work through people. So he said, he said, you can bring me all the money you want to. <laughs> well, somebody said, you know what? Uh, somebody put a check in the offering for $666. Well, we can't take that. That's the mark of the beast, 666. <laughs> Jesse DuPanta said, you can write sixes all over those checks for me. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but see, there's people that, there's things, there's things that we have that, well, I, I, I just, you just can't receive some of these things. You just you have to be able to receive what God's got. You have to, and you have to know how to receive. How do I receive? I receive it by faith. Yes. Lord, I'm, I set myself. Do you have trouble? Just set yourself down and just find out what the Word of God says about it, and then just find different scriptures that cover your case. And then you say, Lord, I receive this right now by faith. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. And God will do it. Well, how do you know God will do it? You, we did read Matthew 24, or Mark 20, 11, 24. Whatsoever things, whatsoever things, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe, believe. You have to have faith. Believe that you receive it. Now, there's a difference between faith and believing. All right? Faith is a noun. Person, place, or thing. Faith is a verb. It's action. Okay? Yeah. You can have faith. Faith without works, works is, dead. is dead being alone. Yeah. So you can have faith, but it can be dead faith. Because we didn't put any belief in it. it has, you have action to it. So when you believe God, actually your action is receiving. Yeah. Lord, I receive it. Thank you. Thank you. It's mine. It. Thank you, Lord. It's mine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It feels so good to have this. Maybe you're believing God for a husband. You know, God wants you to have a husband. You know, well, you know, you can. You don't don't put a face to it. Don't put a name to it. But you can say, I'd like him. You know, you know, so and so, and you know, be nice and tall or nice and short. You know, give the short guys a chance too. You know. <laughs> but but I, I want a man of God. You know, I, I want a, or I want a woman of God. You know. I, I, I would like someone that, that loves you, wants to serve you. Someone that would treat me like a queen or treat, treat me like a king. Okay? Yeah. You can do that. Okay? And you can receive it. Okay? Okay, you forced me into it. And you did, you forced me. <laughs> Go over to the book of Acts. Oh, God, I didn't want to do this, Lord. You know I did. Forced me into it. Hallelujah. Go with me to Acts chapter 6. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, 
did great wonders and miracles among the people. Hallelujah. Then there arose certain of the, uh, uh, of the synagogue, which was called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and the Cilicias, uh, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom by which the spirit, uh, by which he spoke. And they were not able to res resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Now let me say something to you. Are you listening to me? Yes. The Holy Spirit and make you irresistible. Amen. The Holy Spirit can make you irresistible. That's true. And the response was definite. The silence was definite. Are you going to expand on that any faster? Amen. That's true. You have imagination, don't you? Yeah. The Holy Spirit can make you irresistible. Okay? They could not resist the wisdom by which he spoke. The Spirit of God can, can make you so attractive to some to, to an individual. Well, I want to hope he's got lots of money. Well, it could. <laughs> could. But the Spirit of God can make you irresistible. Wow. Now you 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 say, I don't think that's true. Well, look at look at me. She, she couldn't resist my charm. <laughs> yeah. That's good. True story. Yeah. I'm going to turn this over to you. Good time. 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 Oh, we delight in you, Holy Ghost. 
Lord, we bless your name. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, the Mama Ria Soto, the Mama Randa Ria Soto. Oh, Lord, we worship you, Father God, oh, Jesus, oh, the Mama Ria. Ela mamaranda rio sonto, oh la mamaria sonto. Why it's so hard for my people to receive? Oh, why it's so hard for my people to receive? Oh Jesus, oh, oh Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, to salvation um, uh, sometimes you know we uh, um, you know fear grab us fear worry um, grab us and um, the devil's a liar you know he put the fear on us and then we think we think oh Lord I messed up I lost my salvation but no, no. Uh, the devil just wants to put the fear on you that you can turn, turn off, off God and follow him. Amen? But God says on John, 1 John 1, 9. Um, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful enough that he will forgive us and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. Amen? Yes. That's what um, we have to learn how to receive. Receive his forgiveness even when we mess up. We just repent that he is so faithful. He's faithful enough to, to forgive us and cleanse us. Um, when it comes to healing because we don't see the manifestation right away in our life uh, we just think no, uh, I don't believe God, or we just change our confession, but God wants us to know, uh, just receive, receive, and just worship me, just praise me, like Pastor Gary was saying, um, just thank me for it, thank me for it, and it, you know, just don't, um, don't magnify the pain, just receive, receive God's healing, receive God's provision, Okay, nobody looks in the natural, but what seems in, in, the, spirit, in the spiritual realm, just receive, receive, um, just uh, make it make it easy, make it a habit, just to receive, Lord, I receive your mercy, I receive your grace, I receive your loving kindness, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't feel that they are loved, but God loves you, just loves you the way the way you are, not because of your performance, not because you had done well, but he just loves you, loves you, just receive his love. Amen. Um, let's go to Psalm 23, verse 6. I want you to, to check this out, guys. Thank you, Father God. God is good, God is good all the time, God is good. So, um, verse 6, it says, Surely your surely goodness and unfallen love will pursue me all the days of my life, 
and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. Sureness. We need to um, be people of like, sureness, goodness, and mercy should follow me all besides all the days of my life. Sureness, goodness, and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. And you should have a big smile on your face. Hallelujah. Because of God's grace. God's mercy. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus, Lord. We praise you, Father God. We worship you, Lord. You are so kind to us, Lord. You are so, so awesome, Lord. And we receive. We receive your mercy. We receive your goodness, Lord. Every morning, Lord, we receive. And we are blessed people. We are blessed people that who, who trust in you. Our heart trusts in you, Father God. Thank you, Father. You are so good to us. You are so good, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Every day you're changing us, Lord. You're changing us, Lord, to be the person you created us to be, Father God. When we trust in the Lord with all our heart, when we seek his face, hmm? no matter our performance, no matter, no matter our, what we have gone through, when we put our trust in God, he will meet us there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. All we worship you, all we give you glory, Father, all we magnify your name. We magnify your forgiveness, Lord. We magnify your holiness, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we magnify you, Lord. Oh, la mama rada so. Oh, la mama randa re asanda. Oh, Lord, la mama so. Oh, Lord, our heart burns for you, Jesus. Oh, la mama rada so. Holy Spirit, we love you. Oh, Jesus, on the rock. Ela mamarada, on the riasanda. Hallelujah, Lord, I worship you. Oh, the mamaria. Anda marada, sora, da mama, siondo. Oh, the mamaranda, riasondo. Oh, we worship you, my God, my God. You will never leave us or forsake us. Oh, Jesus, Lord, you said that you're always with us, oh, Lord. That you're fighting our battles for us, oh, Lord. We don't have to look on to men, but to you, Jesus, to magnify you, Lord, to glorify your name. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Oh, you're so good to us, oh, Lord. You are so faithful. You're a faithful God, and we believe in your promises, oh, Lord. We just have to rejoice, rejoice, Lord. Rejoice in you, oh, Lord. And look and look unto you, Father God. Oh, we rejoice in you, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, I worship you. That you're the God who meet every need in our life, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, I worship you and I bless your name. Ela mama sora da babara da si andari asanda. Ela mama randa di osondo. Ela mama randa di asanda. Hallelujah, Lord, I worship you. What is this woman praising God? Oh, because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord, I worship you. Let's turn to Mark 12, verse 34.
Mark 12. <laughs> Mark 12, verse 29, verse 30. Okay, he says, and you, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And how, how do we love God with all our heart and all our mind and all our soul? How do we love him? Question mark. God wants us to be his number one, no second, no third, but number one. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. We worship you and we trust you, Lord, that you are guiding us, Jesus, Lord. How, you, how will you guide us, Lord, the choices that we make in our life? Hmm? choices that we make in our life, that plays a big thing, right? Who we hang around, where um, places we go, um, what we watch on TV, amen, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Like it was, we were saying early, if you have anything that you need to get ready, get, get, get rid of. Our sister um, was telling at that 11 hour, right? We don't want to wait. We don't want to wait that long. If we have anything, anything that we need God to change us, we can ask the Holy Spirit. He's the one who will give us the grace and give us the strength. All right? Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back soon. We have to clean up. Clean up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we love you, Jesus, Lord. And we want to do what is right, Father God. Thank you, Father God. You're guiding us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are good. Thank you, Father, for your mercies on you every morning, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Mm. Praise you, Lord. So just, um, yeah, just meditate on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. He is coming back soon. He is coming back soon, like Sister Jo was saying, at that 11 hour. We don't have that much time, guys, okay? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Let, let, let our life be a worship to you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are guiding us, Lord. That you are equipping us, Lord, for such a time like this, Father God. Our heart trusts in you, Jesus. Our heart trusts in you, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, because you have great things. You have great things for everybody here, Father God. You have great things, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. Ephesians 3 19, they, it says that we could never imagine what he has for us in his storage is big. And sometimes we just dream so little, right? We just got to dream big, big. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We receive. We receive, Father. We receive all that you have for us, Jesus. You are so good to us, Lord. You are so faithful. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. To you, we give you all the glory, Father God. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. You are good. You're good. You're good. It's time. It's time. It's time. Like Sister Jo was saying. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. If you have any unforgiveness. 
forgiveness. Now is the time. Now is the time. Oh, God is healing. He's faithful. He's faithful, faithful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, guys. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Bless your holy name. If anybody needs prayer, come on. Come on down and we'll pray for you. God is good. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Otherwise, guys, um, you are dismissed. What time is the night? Uh, you are dismissed. Um, and I will see you Tuesday for prayer mm. and Wednesday, regular service. May God bless you and keep you and let his face shine upon you and guide you peace.